Most of us here don't have a personal connection to the Browns, but we do still feel a connection. And I think that makes sense because for the past 14 years, they've given us a lot of opportunities to see ourselves in their stories. Like maybe you're not a sister wife, but you're a wife. So you can understand some of the stress of trying to relate to your partner. Maybe you're not a parent to 18 kids, but you are a parent. So you understand the stress of trying to raise young, healthy, happy children into happy, healthy, loving adults. So, you know, over the years, I think a lot of us have been able to find a little piece of our stories in the parts of their stories that they've shared. And so even though this connection is one-sided, it's still very real. And the existence of that real connection means that a lot of us are trying to figure out now, how do we care for that connection? What's the caring thing to do right now? Is it to abandon the show? Is it to stop watching this show that we've been watching since 2010? Or is it more caring to keep watching the show and to just know that we're going to have to deal with the discomfort of seeing a difficult moment and knowing what it will ultimately lead up to? Last year, uh, journalist Zara Hanawalt wrote an article called The Psychological Reason You Can Grieve a Celebrity's Death. And in it, she quoted psychologist Terry Bacow, who said, on a psychological level, the loss triggers empathy and compassion as well as loneliness. And people often struggle with change. And when someone dies that you've been following, this can come as a shock and require a period of adjustment. The article goes on to explain that nowadays, this type of loss can hit us really hard because we didn't just see Garrison and the other Browns once a week on our TV screens. We see this family every day. They're on TikTok, they're on Patreon, they're on Facebook, Instagram, on in magazines, I don't know where else, This, but it's like anywhere. And any way you wanna connect with them, there they are. And now all of a sudden we have this awareness that it's never gonna be the same. And therein lies that feeling of loss. Dr. Bacow, the uh, psychologist from the article says that it's a sign of being human to feel grief in a moment like this and to experience sadness when someone you care about dies, even if you didn't know them well. She continues by saying that feeling grief over a celebrity's death is especially normal when someone dies at a young age or in an unexpected way. And it's interesting to me to see how different groups in this community of sister wives, fans, to see how we're all responding to this loss. I mean, the family, the media, content creators, and the audience, we're all finding different ways to manage these feelings and move forward. A couple of days ago, the rumor started circulating that the Browns are filming right now. And I don't know if any of those stories are true because all the sources are anonymous and unnamed, but it does feel possible to me that the show would put out that rumor, even just to see how people respond to the possibility that this will be shown on a future episode. Now, one of those anonymous insiders told Radar Online, as sad as it is, his unexpected death came during the timeline of filming. This family is normally always filming, whether it's actual cameras are or on their phones. Now, is that the right thing for the family to be doing right now? Do you think it makes sense that they would film this? It seems likely that some of them would argue that it is right for them to do it. And probably some of them are arguing that it's not. But at the same time that the family is trying to figure out how and when are they going to share this story and how and when is it going to appear on the show, you have the media, the content creators who are going in a multitude of directions. On one hand, you have outlets that are really giving you all the details. They're sharing every bit of information that they can find out about this issue. And some of it's like they're answering questions that I didn't even know we could ask. What was the last text message? Who showed up at the house after the police were called? Who didn't show up? Now in real life, I would never ask that of a grieving family, but this is the life of being a reality TV star, I suppose. Others are moving forward more cautiously. They're feeling out their audience, you know, checking in to see when it's right to start posting about the show and the family again. Now there's even some sources who are digging further into the show now, who are highlighting clips from old episodes that really just seem more heartbreaking now than they did when they first aired. Now, maybe out of those options, uh, you found a space that feels good to you as an audience member, or maybe you're still looking. Maybe you're just not sure how to care for this connection right now. Over the weekend, Christine shared a bunch of photos on Instagram and the caption that she used to me 
hints at this feeling of longing and loss and just not really being sure what to do. She wrote, every photo with Garrison in it is now infinitely more important than ever before. I am scrambling for just another glimpse of such an incredible man, brother, son, dot, dot, dot. And to me, that dot, dot, dot is that uncertainty. To me, it reads like she doesn't even know where to go from here. Now that caption is so sad and so understandable because things have changed. We didn't want it to change like this. We weren't ready for it to change like this. And yet here we are. Dr. Bacow has some advice for people like us, <laughs> people in a community where we're trying to figure out how to grieve and determine our next steps, people who are struggling to process the loss of a public figure. She says, first, allow yourself to feel your feelings. Don't ignore them or suppress them. It doesn't matter how well you knew or did not know the person. It's okay to be sad. She goes on to say that it is incredibly helpful to talk about or write about your feelings, share your dismay with other people that admire the public figure, or maybe even with those who didn't admire the public figure. But that last statement, share your dismay with other people that admire the public figure, that encourages me to keep this space open. For a few days, I've been feeling like I need to just take a break from sister wives and maybe just vow to not speak about them again. Every time I would open up YouTube, I was surprised to see that another content creator had posted another video about Sister Wives. And I just wondered, how were they doing this so quickly? I just couldn't get my thoughts together around my grief, around my sadness and the way it connects to my own life. It was a lot. And I felt like, yeah, maybe this is a sign. I just need to take a step back. But what I realize now is that I have been watching this family since 2010. And whether or not I'm going to be talking about my feelings of grief and uncertainty, I am going to be feeling them. And I know that having this space, this space to connect with others who maybe relate to some of those feelings is a pretty big blessing. So I don't know exactly how and when I'm going to continue to talk about Sister Wives, but I am going to continue talking about it in a way that makes sense for how I feel and in a way that I hope continues to bring us together. I also plan to continue talking about other shows and I'm also exploring the idea of getting back to what this channel was originally intended to be. Now, as you might know, I have a video, I think it's called Why I Talk About Sister Wives So Much or something like that. I forget if I say this in that video, but the story of this channel is that this channel was a 41st birthday present to myself. I spent my 40th year feeling down, down, down. I turned 40 and just immediately felt down. I felt down that I didn't have the career I thought a 40 year old should have. I felt down that I was still asking myself questions that I thought a 40 year old should know the answers to. By the time I turned 41, I realized like, I did not want to focus on the down so much. I wanted to make sure that I was spending time looking at the good. And so I started this channel as a way to um, force myself <laughs> to notice the good. And so every day or every other day, I just posted, I uploaded a video about this is something good that happened today. And that's why the channel is called Everyday Candace, just the regular everyday things that made my life good. And one day I decided I was going to make a video about my favorite show because that's something that brought me happiness. And much to my surprise, a lot of people watched that video. As time went on, I just kept talking about the show because I really do love the show and people kept watching and we were having great conversations in the comments section. And this was like becoming a real community and it was awesome and totally unexpected. And I really enjoyed it. As I've gotten further into talking about reality TV, I realized that I've gotten a little bit further from the original intent, which is to stay focused on the things that bring me joy and happiness and the everyday things that make me happy to be Candace. So I'm not exactly sure how I want to incorporate that original intent into this space. I don't want to um, be totally disconnected from where you are because it's fun that we're here together. But just know that it's what I'm thinking about. Um, life, like I say in a lot of my videos, life can be really hard. Life can be very challenging and stressful for so many people all around the world. And so I do think there is some value in having a space where we can focus on the good. So it's something I'm thinking about. If you have thoughts about that or anything else I talked about in the video, you know, I want to hear it. I want to hear what you have to say. And I will either meet you down in the comments or in my next video. Okay. 
Thank you for being here. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.